Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Spellbinders once again, and for today's project, we are going to have fun creating another vignette using the Amazing Paper Grease Die of the Month, and this is called Pop-Up 3D Vignette home sweet home so this is going to be great for somebody who just moved into a new home seems to be a lot of that going on in my area um, but you can have so many opportunities with this you even have the opportunity where you don't have to create the vignette you can make it into a card uh, just keeping your pieces right on to the front so as always there's always many possibilities when it comes to uh, creating and taking your dies and stretching them to use them as other functions or in other ways in your art creations. So let's get started. As always, we're going to swip, switch over, swip, <laughs> switch over to voiceover. And I've already taken care of all of my die cutting. So let's get started and build our vignette. Okay, so let's get started. So here are the pieces that you basically need. So you need two of your side pieces for the bars. Five of those need to be cut. You need uh, five of these rectangles, three of the tabs. And again, I'm going to do um, uh, both sides of this, um, of the vignette. So I'm actually doing it you know, sticking to, I was inspired um, how uh, Becca put hers together um, because this one's, I mean, all of them are gorgeous, but this one has like a lot of pieces to it. So you can really have fun building. All right, so let's start with the bars, the, the braces that go across. So you take three of the five that you've cut and you fold them in half, and then the other two you will rip apart. Um, so then you'll you'll have a total of seven there. Now you won't use all seven, okay? You'll just use the ones that you need. Now you take your side panels here, and you want to make sure that the tabs are facing in towards each other. You don't want them pointing out away from each other. And those that are folded you're going to put them in the slot and then make sure you just slide it down. It'll lock down when you're putting that into that slot. Now it's a little fiddly. So, you know, patience is a virtue here. Yeah. Don't remember it's paper. <laughs> it tears. <laughs> yeah. Um, there will be no tearing as you will see here. So I was very surprised. And then the individual ones, you put those along the top. Now I had made a mistake here. So those bottom ones, um, you want to make sure that the folded side is at the bottom from the individual. So you want that opening to be on the top. And, and you'll see what I mean as we get further, because I didn't realize I made this mistake. I understood what they were there for, but I didn't realize that I put them in upside down. Yeah. So learn from my mistake. But we keep going. I didn't, again, I kind of kept on going with it. Once you get the one side in place, now we're going to move on to the other side. And it's very easy. And here's where you want to wiggle it back and forth. So you will have an extra piece. Make sure you do that. Make sure you wiggle this back and forth. Because what that's going to do, it's going to break it in. She's going to bend nicer. She's going to be even. So just really work that paper. Get those fibers moving. Now I'm going to use my liquid adhesive. So I'm going to bend her down, make her flat, and I'm going to put the one side on. And when you do that, it's going to perfectly match to the other side. Now what's really great with this die set is, and if you see my panels there, you can see some embossed bricks. So there's little tiny uh, pieces here that you can do some embossing. That's where you'll use that Spellbinders rubber mat and put those textures into those pieces. So I thought that was really cool. Now for this here, for the archway, you really only need one of the gray because I'm using gray, ivory, and this blue and one of the ivory piece. I just wanted to have a little bit more dimension. So I'm layering them. I'm 
creating a thicker chipboard piece. So for each side, and again, I'm creating a, a double image. So there's gonna, you're gonna see the house in the front and you're gonna see the house on the back. Um, so I'm just layering these up again, just giving it a little bit more dimension, a little bit more thickness um, when it comes to these pieces. You don't have to do that. And the card that comes in your kit really does a great job explaining how this goes together and what you need to cut to do just the front. Now, I will also say it is extremely helpful, and I always try to do this um, as well, to watch Spellbinders videos also. They give great tips and tricks, um, although I miss the one where they have to be folded ones up. Um, so I always like to do that, and plus they give so many other inspiration as well. So again, I'm just gluing these together. Now I'm going to layer them onto the backing piece, so you can have a lot of fun with these panels to make them your own. So I have two uh, roof pieces, and then yeah, there's that vintage photo. You knew you were going to see it, right? I'm just saying, you haven't seen it in a while. Um, just going around the edges, again, what the vintage photo for me does, some people think it makes it look dirty. Um, for me, it helps it to stand out. Um, it, it frames it in a way um, and helps to bring out all of the beautiful texture that is embossed in each of these pieces. I'm gluing the two pieces that you die cut for the top and the bottom of the roof, and I did those in gray, um, just to give that a little bit more of an accent as well. And they're really easy. There's actually a section that you'll see lined off to where these get placed, and they just literally go right along the bottom um, of that piece. And again, I'm doing two because I'm doing a front and a back. So I'm grabbing now uh, my broken china and I want to go around the blue. I did that with the vintage photo. So I figured, you know what, let's get some, some blue on this again, just to add some shadow um, to the edges, make it pop even more than what it already is. So I'm going to do that around uh, the pieces. Um, yes, I was lazy, didn't grab a blending tool, so I'm just using a makeup sponge. You can certainly do that. You know, just get that into your ink um, and then just use that to go around your edges and it works perfectly. Absolutely. These are the panels that are the cards that slide into the vignette um, in behind the house um, and we will get to those in a moment. So I'm going to put my topper onto my chimney. I did the chimney in ivory, um, again, with that coming off of the roof, and then I did the topper in the gray as well. And I'm just adding that here. And remember, I'm doing two because I'm doing a double-sided. You do not have to do that. You don't have to do a double-sided. You could just do the front um, and then the back. You know, again, they're going to sit it up. So nobody's going to look at the back. And if they do, slap their hands. So we're just going to attach the chimney. Now, if you are doing a double-sided, you want to make sure that you're doing it on the other, on the opposite side of the other one. So that when this does sits up, the chimney is going to be on the same side. So when you look at it one way, it's going to be on the left. And when you look at it on the back, it's going to be on the right. So let's work on the front. Now, this front piece of the house actually pops out. So you want to make sure that you fold those sides in and they're actually going to be come off of that front first you want to put your roof on and again I like to flatten it out because again I'm using my liquid adhesive by all means use double-sided tape but you want to make sure that it's something strong and if you are using a liquid adhesive you want to make sure that it is a fast grabbing liquid adhesive. So the Barely Art glue that I'm using here, which I'm becoming a huge fan of as I continue to use it. And then of course my trusty um, Art Glitter Glue works just as well also. But you want to have something that's quick, quick grabbing. I added the arches to the top and they just line up along the side. So now you can create your door. Now what I chose to do was to cut the door in ivory and then cut another one in white 
um, so that I could have the backing behind the windows. Now, what you could certainly do is just take that die and actually emboss it onto your cardstock and, and die cut that out and then just place that behind as well. Um, I liked the texture that was in the door because, again, all these pieces emboss, so you can see this slight embossing coming through your, your window. Again, it's just different. I did. I took the long way around. Absolutely. But, you know, make it easier for yourself. <laughs> just emboss your second door um, to get that. And then the, wind the windows will actually pop out a little bit. Um, again many ways that we can put our pieces together it, it's either and remember now when you're die cutting you get the little tiny doorknob too so don't lose that yeah mm -hmm. just say so now we have our doors there next i'm going to grab um, all the windows so i got carried away with the windows i had one idea and then i'm like wait a minute this isn't working so what i decided to do is to use the ivory ones and I'm going to set those in place. Your tweezers do become your friends when it comes to this. And I'm going to set a window on each side of the door and then a window is going to go on the base of the house on each side of these fronts. You get these beautiful flourishes that you can either put above your windows, below your windows, um, and these other little arches. So there's so many pieces that you can create your own house um, as you're building your vignette. Um, I love this arch here that goes over the front. And then I'm just going to real quick do the second one as well. Not You won't see everything that I do to the other side, but it's mirror image. So everything that I do to the front, it is being done to the back. And you'll see that at the end when I show the final piece. Um, these tweezers are great because of that point. I'm able to move things as well. Remember, with liquid adhesive, you do have what I refer to, and it's a technical term that us card makers use. It's a wiggle movement. Um, you have a wiggle time frame um, so that, you know, it's not long, but you do have that ability. Once you get it down, you can use the point of that tweezers just to get it completely in place. I am going to use my liquid glue here. I do suggest using double-sided adhesive because, again, this piece is propped up. Um, the piece you're putting it on, the house base, that's propped up. So you've got a lot of propped items here. So just to make sure that you can get that bond, I do pull in a my metal ruler just to push down on those edges to make sure that they are adhering. If I had used double-sided tape, um, it would have been a little bit easier. So, you know, again, whatever's easiest for you, whatever you have, you know, you want to use that. And here I'm just going to set the window on each side. And it's okay that I'm going over those uh, brick embossed areas uh, because they'll be covered up. Because what I'm actually going to do is I will come in, you see all those little pieces, and again, I was going to double up the windows as well. I decided against that, so what I'm going to do is for the inside of the windows, I'm going to use the white pieces that I cut out, and I'm going to set those inside the window shapes. So we're going to do some die cut inlay um, for my windows there. And I again, I do that on both sides. This time, before on the house front, we went to the top with the flourishes. This time, we went to the bottom. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in there. I'm going to grab my wax pencil, and I am going to pick up those pieces and just set them in place, and then just put a little bit of pressure down on them to make sure that they are in um, their spot um, so that they don't pop out. Now, you could also, um, again, I chose white uh, for the inside of my windows because while I was looking for colors, I wanted to keep the colors, you know, solid in a way, but just have that shading. 
Now, you could add a little bit of blue to these. You could add a little bit of gray, you know, to make them look like windows. You know, the way that we perform, you know, give that color um, into them. So, I mean, you could have a lot of fun. You could use yellow. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You could use um, different colors to make it look like it's <coughs> curtains that are coming through. I have something in my throat. I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. Okay, sorry I had to take a sip of my tea there. <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. Must have sounded horrible. So, also within this die set, as if there's not enough there, are these adorable little tiny flowers and a little tiny vine and leaf set. So what I did was I dug into my stash and I found some ink smush backgrounds in like a peach um, an orange and yellow and a little bit of red and that's what I use to die cut for my flowers and for my leaves so I put those along the top and I put those actually along the bottom to make it look like maybe there was some little you know potted plants down there you could create with that little tiny arch um, that's sitting on the two outer windows you could turn that into a flower pot maybe off the windows and have flowers coming out of that um the details in this is are just absolutely endless you know as i'm putting this together all of these ideas were were coming into into my head of course after the fact that i put all of those pieces on um but again you could just keep on building this and building it i mean you could have flowers up on the roof flowers coming out of the chimney i mean it's just this is just absolutely precious um, I had a lot of fun with that and those that is the two sides of that so we're gonna set that aside because now we need to work on our cards where you can write your messages add your photos add um, memorabilia from maybe a trip you take or anything like that um, and you want to slice these down just a little bit now I probably went too heavy but um, just a little bit because then so that they can slide in there the tabs already score for you so I chose to put one on the left one on the right and then one in the middle you could choose to put all behind each other you know however you would want um, but all you have to do is just fold those in half and then again just put them along that line along the top and line them up and then once you have the one side on you can just fold that down and adhere them that way um, I just like the, I guess that's from my journals you know I like to have the the differences in them you could put flowers on these too I, I love those little flowers can you tell um, you could decorate these you know as well or put them down on the corner create little tiny photo corners for yourself I came in with my dream nouveau drops I've I'm loving the dream nouveau drops um, and just adding the centers to the flowers um, I'm adding centers to those flourishes I added it to the doorknob um, I'm gonna add them in the archway just to give some more embellishment to it but you could use your uh, pearl en uh, enamel dots your pearl dots you know whatever you have in your stash now I did not do the pearls on the back um, I actually go to do that later. Here is where I realize, oh my, my cards are going to fall straight through. So all I did was cut a piece of cardstock the same color. I put glue along the bottom of the strips, and then I just pushed that up in there to hold that in place. I am so sorry. <laughs> I just, but yeah, I put a card in there and it went. Whoop! <laughs> <laughs> to the bottom I'm like now this is not gonna work <laughs> and I, that's when I realized I actually put that section in where I put those bars upside down so make sure you're putting them in the right way so I do hope I gave you some tips and tricks on putting this together and I hope I didn't confuse you too much but I do hope always that you enjoyed the project that we created today featuring the Spellbinders Amazing Paper Grace die set for July and again, it is the pop-up 3D vignette, home sweet home. As always, the links will be down below in the video description um, to their blog, 
to the gallery for more inspiration to their shop the link to all of their clubs they keep growing in the clubs and what's great is they are all for the most part they're actually working together you can cross between the two kits and they match so i think that is absolutely great just another way to stretch our supplies if you have any questions or comments please make sure you leave those down below if you haven't already i'd love for you to subscribe and if you do ring the bell you may be notified i don't know youtube's a little particular with there but it should help and give a thumbs up um, as well if you like this video enjoy your day continue to smile enjoy this process have fun with it but remember what's most important for me and it's always important always be creative guys till the next video take care